So we got a class for y'all today. Uh, it's entitled, So What? No Excuses. All right. I did this class a little bit while back um, to a few. We, you know, we was talking about some things and we went over some things, right? Uh, this truth can be very difficult. All right. This truth can be monotonous. This truth can be, uh, you know, a, a compounding effect. Uh, lately, Bishop has been calling it uh, battle fatigue. All right. But we're going to go over some things today. It's not not uh, there's no videos or, or anything like that, but uh, it's going to be some uh, things that we need to consider in this walk, in this fight, um, in this war for salvation. Um, things are going to come up, come up. Your brain is your mind is going to play tricks on you big time. But you got to tell yourself you got to have some discipline to tell yourself. So what? All right. So uh, a couple of things. Right. In, in terms of prayer, right? We're supposed to be praying three times or more a day, right? You got to tell yourself, so what? Uh, studying, you know, you're supposed to be going over your four chapters a day, at least four chapters. Things are going to come up. So what? Uh, got camp. Some, some brothers doing 180 days of camp. Some brothers doing until the, whatever. Out there, fly missions, whatever. Get tired. So what? All right. Fasting. We pray and fast for our brothers and sisters every single month and more times. Right. Sometimes you don't feel like fasting, but you're not fasting for yourself. You're fasting for your brothers. You're fasting for uh, the, the sisters and the brothers and the, the, uh, all the others, all the other people that need you that can't do for themselves. Right. You got to say, so what? All right. So bring up that first meme. I put this meme on Facebook. Uh, uh, last year sometime, right? It's about uh, the blood. Right, that one, right there, all right? So this class is for all my fellow warriors, right? You brothers, uh, you men, you captains, you officers, you bishops, deacons, all the brothers all up and down. And also you sisters. You sisters are not uh, warriors, but you out there to teach the kids, right? And that can be troubles of education. Read that for me. To all my fellow warriors, spit out the blood and get back in the fight. So that's a heavy statement, right? Because in this uh, truth, man, you're going to get punched in the mouth, not physically, but proverbially. When you got to teach those kids and those bad kids in the back ain't listening, that's you getting punched in the mouth. You got to spit out the blood because it's going to hurt. And you got to get back in there teaching those kids. You brothers going to be on the street teaching. And people are going to be, ah, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. So you're getting punched in the mouth. You're getting corrected by leadership on something. You're getting punched in the mouth. Proverbially. Not really. But it's going to hit. It's going to feel like you got punched in the mouth. Okay. Spit out the blood. Get back in the fight. All right. Give me uh, that first scripture, Sirach chapter 33 and verse 17. <clears throat> All the right, book. so rock 33 and 17, because we don't do this, study, pray, apply, and do all the things that we do for ourselves only. Give me that. The book of Sirach, chapter 33 and verse 17. Uh-huh. Consider that I labor not for myself only, uh-huh. but for all them that seek learning. So God says, I labor not for myself only, right? When you first come into this truth, you might think, man, I want to learn as many scriptures that I need to know for me, man, so I can get right, so I can this, this, and the other. But as you begin to grow and mature, you sisters, you brothers, you have to understand you're not going through this labor for yourself only. This is not j- for you. Yeah, along the way, you're going to get yourself right. You're going to fix some things in your life. But there's a brother and there's a sister out there in them streets that don't know where their next good word is coming from. That don't know, um, you know, anything about how ch- to change their situation. You got it, though, because you've been studying, you've been praying and applying. and be, But all of those things come up to where you don't feel like doing it. You got to tell yourself, so what? Why? Because the brother and sister that's out there waiting on you. All right. Read that again. Verse 17. Uh-huh. Consider that. I labor not for myself only, uh-huh. but for all them that seek learning. Right. It says only, meaning that you are laboring for yourself because you only can save your own soul, but it's not just for you. 
all right? Get that selfish selfishness out of your mind, all right? Give me that definition of uh, labor, the uh, verb, the second definition. Oh, you can read that first one, and then we're going to jump down to the verb. Miriam Wester, def- uh, definition of labor. Expediture no, of... Ex- expenditure. Expenditure of physical or mental effort, especially when difficult or compulsory. All right. So uh, the labor that we're talking about is physical labor, spiritual labor, uh, all the up, all the above, right? We got to um, get our mind that this is going to be work. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. But it's going to be some physical uh, exertion or expenditure and mental effort. Don't think that you're just going to get the kingdom by observation. The Lord says you ain't. There's going to be some work involved in it. Uh, Jump down. Scroll down to that first definition of the verb. Yep. Read. To exert one's power of body or mind, especially with painful or strenuous effort. So it's going to be difficult. But you got to always tell yourself, so what? Give it, I don't care if it's difficult. The kingdom of heaven, been going over the uh, scriptures and, and classes about what the kingdom of heaven is like. Yes, it's going to be difficult to get that. Where the, the, the sand in heaven ain't sand. It's made out of gold. Where the streets are made out of precious jewels. And the streets are made out of gold itself. The pillars you're going to be walking and leaning on and talking to your friends, talking to your brothers and sisters in the kingdom, going to made, be made out of diamonds and rubies and, and all of this other stuff. Mansions. It says it's got stories, meaning your house got multi-levels to it in the kingdom of heaven. Christianity says all you got to do is do three Hail Marys and you just believe on Christ and that's it. No, that ain't it. Dude, it's, it's hard work through much pain so you get the kingdom of heaven all right uh drop that give me uh micah chapter 4 and verse 10 micah chapter 4 and verse 10 the book of micah chapter 4 and verse 10 Uh uh-huh be in pain and labor to bring forth O daughter of zion to bring forth what the kingdom of heaven be in pain to bring forth the kingdom of heaven. That's teaching uh, on the streets. That's your sisters in the kids' corner. That's your brothers in the kitchen, sisters in the kitchen, security members, security brothers, on post for however long. You always doing something to bring forth the kingdom of heaven because every single week, our congregations are filling up with brothers and uh, uh, going out and teaching on the corners going out and doing fly missions. When they get here, they need to be welcome. Welcome home. They need to be uh, 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 see the spirit of the Lord in your congregation. That takes work because we got life too. Life happens as well. So uh, read that again. Be in pain Uh and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, Uh like a woman in travail. Like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. Uh-huh. There shalt thou be delivered. Uh-huh. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. But that's going to take time. That's going to take effort. That's going to take, that's not talking about uh, um, Babylon, the old Babylon, Babylon the great. All right, drop that. Go to Acts 14 and 22. Much tribulation. All right. Acts 14 and verse 22. The book of Acts, chapter 14 and verse 22. Read on. Confirming the souls of the disciples uh-huh. and exhorting them to continue in the faith. So you're confirming the soul when you go out and teach, when you go out and, uh, and, and minister and, and meet with your brothers inside the congregation, you're confirming those souls. You're um, uh, congregating. You're getting together. You're uh, reaffirming. You're securing, you're counseling, you're making sure the brother's all right, confirming those souls. Because it could be that the brother may be on edge to falling out. But you see the brother, you're confirming those souls, meeting with them. Um, and read on, it's, it's ex- exhorting. And that we do, and that, oh, and that we must 
through no, no. much tribulation. No, 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 read that again. Start from the top. Verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. That's how you know it's connected. It says, and. So confirming those souls and exhorting them, right? We must come in here to where we exhort one another. This is not the place to fight. This is not the damn streets. This is not that. Those sisters and brothers that come in here should not feel the tension because you're looking at them sideways. No, you're confirming those souls and you're exhorting them to keep the faith. Read. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So it's going to be very, very difficult, right? The scriptures say even the righteous shall scarcely be saved. So it's going to take a lot of work to get in there. And it ain't going to get there by uh, making excuses. Let's get, uh, let's get through these, all right? Uh, Luke 21, 16. Luke chapter 21 and verse 16. The book of Luke chapter 21 and verse 16. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents uh-huh. and brethren uh-huh. and kinsfolk and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. So in this truth, right, you're getting your spirit together. You're getting your mind right. You used to be a nigga in the world. You used to beat your wife. You used to uh, sell dope. You used to do all of these things. But now you're getting yourself right. And it says that you're going to be betrayed both by your parents because you are not, not walking after the flesh anymore. You're not doing the things of the world. So your parents is going to talk bad about you. You know how I know? Because mine did. Mine did. The Lord, hey, I'm going to tell you a story. The, the Lord um, made my mama butt dial me. She had just kissed me and, oh, my son this and my son that. She went out back to the backyard of her house. I was inside uh, taking a shower or something. And then I got out. My phone had a missed message. I listened to the message. My mom was going off for no reason other than I'm walking in the path of the Lord and everything that I did reminded her of the foolishness that she was doing, right? This was a long time ago, but the Lord made a butt dial me so I know where exactly uh, I should put my mind, right? Because it says, uh, you shall be betrayed both by parents, read. And brethren, uh-huh. and kinsfolk, uh-huh. and friends, mm-hmm. and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. And you notice that it says you should be Betrayed by the people that you love, parents, brethren, kinsfolk, and friends. You can't be betrayed by somebody that you don't give a damn about. It's the people that is closest to you. Christ, these are the red letters. Christ said you're going to be betrayed. That's a part of that pain, part of that pain process of uh, getting the kingdom of heaven because you're going to lose a lot of people on the way. You're going to lose a lot of people on the way to the kingdom of heaven. And some of them are going to be your parents, friends, kinsfolks, cousins, brothers people that you thought had your back, right? And it's going to be painful. But you got to say, so what? All praises to the most high. That's what you got to say. Because other than that, you're going to be in your feelings sulking. And you're going to find yourself going right back into the world, chasing evil, wicked family members that's going to have you celebrating all manner of foolishness, right? All right, uh, Wisdom of Solomon 2.17, all right? Because some of us, being uh, betrayed, it says that last part, and some of you shall be, uh, shall they cause to be put to death. Wisdom of Solomon 2, 17. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2 and verse 17. Read. Let us see if his words be true. Uh-huh. And let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. Uh-huh. For if the just man be the son of God, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Uh-huh. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. So that's going to happen to us. Your brothers, your mama, your some, whoever that you thought loved you, is going to uh, offer you up to the people. You're going to lose your job. They're going to send uh, letters to your job. They're going to send uh, photos of you teaching on the street in your purple and gold, rebuking with all authority. Uh, trying to get the community right, but they're going to spin it and say, oh, you're a part of a hate group. She a part of this cult. 
I don't think she should be a part of your company because she uh, teaches this and teaches that. He teaches that. This is talking about actual torture. Well, hell, we're talking about all type of things that you're going to go through from the hands of your family that you, that you love. But in that, you got to say, whatever. It is what it is. So what? It is what it is, right? So this class is called So What? All right? Keep going. I'm uh drop that for uh, Wisdom of Solomon 1424. Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 24. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14 and verse 24. Yep. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Uh-huh. But either one slew another treacherously or grieved him by adultery. So in this truth, some of that is gonna happen too. Some treachery. We've already seen it. We've already seen it. I ain't going to put the business out there, but we've already seen it. Brothers are still, sisters are still repenting. They have the lust of the flesh that they had before they trying to get rid of, but it manifested itself into treachery. Brothers damn near about to go to blows about their wife and all this other stuff about their kids, about just other things. None, not necessarily about adultery or anything like that, but Treachery will, will happen. All of these things will happen in this truth, but you got to be willing to go through it. You have to set your mind, no matter what happens, it is what it is, and so what? All right? Uh, read on. Verse 25. So that there reigned in all men without exception blood, uh -huh. manslaughter, uh -huh. death, death. And, and dissimulation. Dissimulation. Corruption, uh -huh. unfaithfulness, uh -huh. tumults, yep. perjury, yep. disquieting of good men, uh -huh. forgetfulness of good terms, yep. defiling of souls, yep. changing of kind, disorder in marriages, uh -huh. adultery, and shameless uncleanness. So all of those things are going to be, you're going to go through. All of those things that may touch your life at one point or another, all of those things will uh, challenge your faith. You have to set your mind right, spit out the blood when you get hit with one of these different treacheries and say, yo, it's time to fight. Let's go. Let's keep going. That happened. Oh, okay. I ain't got time for that right now. We got people to save. We got people to go out there and teach this gospel to. Call your brothers and say, hey, man, listen, I need you to pray for me. All right? So uh, drop that. 2 Timothy 3.12. Some of you, some of all of this stuff is going to happen to us. So what? All right? Uh, uh, yeah, some of y'all might be put in, put in prison. We, hell, myself included. Read. This is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12. Yeah. Yay, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So you're going to suffer persecution. You may suffer prosecution and you're going to suffer persecution. Persecution is being uh, um, uh, when people say you did this and persecute you for that and judge you for this and judge you and, and call you all types of names and all this other whatever. It's going to happen. It's not going to be a, a walk in the park like you read you like some of these other pastors say, man, it's just I'll oh, just believe in the Lord. That's all you need. No. Christ himself says you shall suffer persecution. All right? Drop that. All right? All right. Uh, so that's that pain that comes with the kingdom of heaven. That, that is some of that pain that you're going to face um, in this walk. All of those things, those treacheries going to happen. Right? So then there's another pain. There's another thing that comes that you got to say. I don't. I got to create time for. I got this. I got to wake up for that. I got to wake up for this. But I got to study. A lot of us uh, lack in our studies. A lot of us put our studies off to so much to where, shit, we ain't read nothing this week. We ain't studied now scripture this week. All right? You can't do that, right? Uh, Sirach 632. Read that. And this is how you study, right? 
Now, just that reading, this boom, 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 and just, oh, close the book, just say you checking off a box? Nah, can't do that. The book of Sirach, chapter 6, 32. Yeah. My son, if thou will, thou shalt be taught. Uh-huh. And if thou will apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. So when you're studying or when you're learning, you, you got to apply your mind. You must apply your mind when you study. You must meditate on what you're studying. You got to put something in your brain and, and try to make it stick. You got to do whatever. You, however you learn, you got to do that. I know I learn by reusing the scripture, right? If I'm reading something and I get the understanding of it, hell, that week when I'm talking to a brother, I'm going to try to, hey, give me a Sirach chapter. I'm going to try to use it. So it can stick because I'm a man that like to work. I, I put my hands on something and I can learn better versus just sitting there listening. Them to slide out the seat. Right. But I got to put my hands and a lot of brothers got to put their hands to it. Right. So read. Verse 33. Yep. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. Yeah. If you, you got to love to hear the word of the Lord, then you're going to get that understanding. Right. If we got lives. Things happen. So what? Who, who gives a damn? You got to put studying as a, as a priority in your life because if you love to hear it, then you'll get the understanding of what's going on. Brothers ask you a question or hell, just how to apply this to your life. But you got to love to hear it. Read. And if thou bow thy ear, uh -huh. thou shalt be wise. Well, you got to constantly listen to it. Get into your spirit. Then you're going to become wise. Read. Stand in the multitude of the elders. Always be around leadership. Always call in leadership. Whenever leadership con comes around, you got to be in the multitude of the elders. Read. And cleave unto him that is wise. Uh-huh. Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. So be, be what did it say? Be willing to hear Every godly discourse, always listening to uh, Bishop, you already said when, when he was in one West back, back in the day, she ain't no seats in there. Everybody listening. He, excuse me. Pardon me. Excuse me. He getting all the way up to the front. No seats. And he'll sit on the floor. He'll sit on the floor just to listen to the godly discourse of the elders. All right. You men. In these congregations, y'all got men that set up over these congregations, but you refuse to ask them any questions. You refuse to stand in front of them and ask anything about anything because you think you know. Nah, that's not how you're going to get uh, wisdom, and that's not how you're going to get understanding. Read on. And let not the parables of understanding escape thee. Uh-huh. And if thou seest a man of understanding... Get thee betimes onto him uh -huh. and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Always uh, getting around that brother, calling him. If you can't go to his house, always call him. Hey, I got a question. What? Worry the hell out of him because you got a question. It is what it is. All right, read. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord uh -huh. and meditate continually what? in his... Meditate what? And meditate continually... In his commandments, uh -huh. he shall establish thine heart, thy mind, and give thee wisdom at thine own desire. That's how you study. That's how you get understanding. That's how you uh, make it stick. That's how you become a, a, a wise brother, sister, a wise and understanding people. Turn off the damn all that other stuff. Meditate on this. If you want to be wise, want to help somebody, meditate on that. All right? Drop, drop that. Job 8 and 8. Mm. The book of Job, chapter 8 and verse 8. Yep. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. And with that understanding of studying, getting around, brothers, you got to also go back and study the former age. Your brothers, your sisters. The uh uh oh, let me uh let me sing y'all something real quick. Let me sing you something real quick. Let me see where that. Mm 
Mm-hmm. There's many more than this, but um, all right, quality of the former age. That's going into the brothers and sisters in this uh, Bible, but it's also going to some of our brothers that's most close to us. All right, the revolutionaries. All right, you got your Malcolm X's, you got your Martin Luther King's, Fred Hampton, read all that names, Huey P. Newton, Geronimo, read. Cesar Chavez, Uh huh. Pedro uh, Albizu Campos, Uh huh. Carlos Mc- Mirigela, 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 Kwame Ture, 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 Matt Turner, Toussaint Levator. Uh, Marcus M. Garvey. Marcus M. And there's many, many more, right? Inquiry of the former age. These are revolutionaries that fought against the system. That You can take it down. That fought against the system. That, that uh, uh, carved the way for us now. But you also got to uh, uh, inquire that former age of brothers and sisters from before that you read in Scripture. All of this ties in together. Yeah, they might not have had the word of the Lord uh, but they had the spirit. They had that spirit of a revolutionary, right? The, the wisdom hadn't risen in them brothers, but they damn sure had the spirit of that fight being a revolutionary to to uh, get from under oppression. Nowadays, brothers out there, they shit, they selling, they doing all type of stuff, which we're just teaching in another state. You try to bring them the way of the Lord, sister, start twerking. Twerking, because they that's they damn that's they damn go to. Whenever they don't like to hear something, they just start shaking their ass. When they don't like to hear the word of the Lord, the only thing they got is to uh, 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 and start start dancing. That is terrible. All right, uh, read that again. The book Job, of Job, chapter yep. 8 and verse 8. Uh-huh. For inquire, I pray thee of the former age and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. So you got to uh, search the past so you don't repeat it. Search the past so you don't repeat it. All right, drop that. 2 Timothy 2.15. All right, you got to show. And, and when you're going back and reading those things and reading about those people, uh, what do they do so you don't repeat it? But you got to study also to show yourself approved that you don't repeat the foolishness. How you know what not to do unless you know what to do? Read. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 15. Uh-huh. Study to show thyself approved uh, unto God. Unto who? Unto God. Unto God, not to man. Don't study these scriptures, come up here and be, oh, I, I know the scripture. I know the precept. I know. No, 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 no. Because that's vain glory. You're only doing it for the brothers to see that you got the precepts. It says study to show thyself approved unto God, meaning that you're changing some stuff about yourself. You're applying the scriptures in your mind. You understand that when Christ returns and to hand out those uh, rewards for your works, you're understanding that these scriptures that you've been studying, you've been applying to yourself. Because some of y'all brothers, some of y'all sisters, hell, most of us got something that we're battling. Not most of us, all of us. It might not be porn. It might not be uh, some other stuff. But it might be talking back to your husband. It might be uh, being disrespectful to, uh, to, your, to your parents. It might be shit, all type of stuff. It might be a whole bunch of stuff that you got going on, a multitude of things. You still battling uh, homosexuality. You came into this truth and say, yo, I ain't doing that no more. But every time you you looking at whatever. So you got to study to show yourself approved unto God, not to us. All right? Uh, drop that. Uh, Isaiah 24, 16. What you got to study out of? The book of Isaiah, chapter 24, and verse 16. Yeah. 34, 16? Yeah, probably 34, 16. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, and verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Uh huh. So, nope. so God says to seek out of his book and read. No one of these shall fail. None shall want her mate. Uh huh. For my mouth it hath commanded, and his spirit it hath gathered. 
them. So all the things that you need to make your uh to make everything better with your spirit. Because in this true, I mean, in life, things are gonna be hard until we get to the kingdom of heaven. But everything gonna get better with your spirit. The spirit man getting strengthened. The spirit man getting itself uh, prepared from the kingdom. The spirit man being more resilient. That perfect man of your spirit uh, is, is uh, getting built up. That's why you're studying the word of the Lord. Because it's going to be a battle of your flesh and your spirit. But you should be winning more battles with your spirit than with your flesh. Hopefully. I pray that you are. All right? So drop that. Uh, Baruch 4 and 1. We're going to skip some of these because we only got, you know, Baruch 4 and verse 1. The book of Baruch, chapter 4 and verse 1. This is the book of the, of the commandments of God and the law that endured forever. Uh-huh. All they that keep it shall come to life. So that book, that holy Bible, the words of God is the commandments of the Lord, the law of God. Everything that you need to get your spirit correct get your spirit corrected, is in that book, is in this book. You got to. You got to read it. You got to study. So there ain't, there's going to be some time you don't feel like it. Who ha- Nobody cares. Like the class say, so what? Sometimes you don't feel like doing it. Like Deacon Laba said before, hey, man, um, you got a spirit on you. Start reading, start getting sleepy. You got to get through that thing and say, so what? I got to do this because my spirit is counting on it. And another brother's spirit is counting on it. That is weaker in spirit than me. Somebody else is counting on you studying. So don't study for yourself. All right? Study for somebody else. All right, drop that. All right? All right, uh, Sirach 39 and 8. All right? So once you study, once you get yourself built up, once you start understanding who you are um, and what you need to do, to help yourself, now you got to go out and teach. Some days it's tough. Some days you're just not in the spirit to go teach, but you got to rile that spirit up and go teach. All right, uh, Sirach 39 and 8. The book of Sirach, chapter 39 and verse 8. He shall show forth that which he had learned and shall glory in the law of the covenant of the Lord. So once you learn it, you got to show forth that what you have learned and what? And shall what? And shall glory in the law of the covenant of the Lord. The brothers and sisters on the street should hear in your teaching, in your voice, the way you move, that you glory in the law of the Lord or the covenant of the Lord. Hey, you, they should see it in your spirit. You might not feel like it, but once you get that mic... Once you see the sin on brothers, once you see that brothers and sisters need you, that spirit shall rile up and that spirit of Judah come out of you. No matter what tribe you are, that spirit of Judah jump on you and brothers start listening, sisters start listening because it ain't you. It's what you've been studying and it's the spirit of the Lord that is on you that's coming out. So you ain't, you got to learn these scripts and then you got to go teach it. Read on. Many shall commend his understanding. Uh Uh-huh. And so long as the world endured, Uh it shall not be blotted out. His memorial shall not depart away. and His name shall live from generation to generation. That's how you should learn to teach. You're not teaching to be all, uh, you know, the grand poobah, nothing like that. But when you when you teach, people should listen. When you teach, that means that you have to learn to teach that way. You have to learn and listen to the multitude of the elders. You have to put together and rile up that spirit of Christ. Because it said his voice was like many waters. He was teaching the thousands of people. So much so he couldn't, he was squished all in the house. They had to take the roof off the house just to let a brother down. In, in, um, in the mix of it because you couldn't come through the doors. His teaching was so magnificent that um, he had to sneak out of town. Hey, don't tell nobody I did this. Don't tell me nobody I did this uh, miracle, man, because, you know, 
And then the brother told him anyway, and they had to leave town. Because he wasn't trying, he wasn't trying to be pressed by people like that at that particular point in time. But your teaching should sound like the spirit of the Lord is coming out of you. All right. Not these sleepy, dead uh teachers that, you know, people just like, oh yeah, oh, okay, all right, all right, and then walk off. All right. Uh first Corinthians uh one and twenty one. The book of First Corinthians, chapter one and verse twenty one. You can't please everybody. Yeah, that teaching is going to be fire, but some people just say, "What the hell ever." All right, read. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Uh huh. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. So it pleased God. Some some uh, read that again. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Start over from the top. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, and verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, uh-huh. the world by wisdom knew not God. So they knew not God. You had the wisdom of the Lord. Some of the brothers and sisters in the world, they ain't know God. They didn't understand what you was teaching. They didn't care about what you was teaching. They call it foolishness. Oh, them niggas in the cult. Oh, them niggas this. Oh, they that. They they are. She's this. Whatever. Right? Read. It pleased God. But it pleased the Lord. By the foolishness of preaching. By the foolishness of preaching. What does it mean by the foolishness of preaching? That you're going to save, uh, you're going to get brother saved uh, um, and cleaned up by speaking some words out of a book. Putting precepts together. Because some brothers might think, oh, you need guns. Oh, you need, uh, you need to fight against the system and go and, and kick down doors. No, the God says all we got to do is speak his words and things will change. But some people are going to call it foolishness. All right. Uh, read. Finish that. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching uh-huh. to save them that believe. It's Titus 2 and verse 3. All right. Still going into teaching. Right. These are these points that uh, uh, we battle with and that we got to tell ourselves. So what? Right? These are the points. These sisters uh, teaching these kids, it's difficult. All right? But you got to do it. Read. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. Yeah. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. So when you get yourself together, behavior have to be holy. You're not out here uh, slandering. You're not out here starting uh, foolishness. You got your stuff together. So your behavior is now holy. What do you have to do? Not false accusers. Okay. Not given to much wine. Yep. Teachers of good things. So now you got your spirit together. You're not uh out here getting drunk and doing all this other foolishness. Now you got to teach good things. Read. That they may teach the young women to be sober. So now you got to teach those young women to be sober the same way you got over the stuff that you used to do. Being sober minded. Not just drinking. But hell, some clarity of mind. Read. To love their husbands. To love their husbands. You got to teach these young, young sisters to love their husbands. And that start from, uh, uh, from young. That start from the age of understanding. Why do you think that it's, it's a difficult thing to please uh, and be a good wife? That's why the good wives in the Bible are praised so highly. You got to, it, it takes a long time to be a good wife. You can't be a, be one of these sisters that say, well, if I find a good man, then I'll be submissive. If I find a good man, then I'll be a good wife. But to these, nah, you got to be a good wife before you are even a wife. You got to learn from young. It takes a long time. That's why it says those age women teach the young women. So it's decades to learning how to be a good wife. Not just, you know, right around the corner. Read. To love their children. So, and also, uh, you have to learn how to love your children. Those older women have to teach these things. And it's troublesome sometimes. Read. To be discreet. Uh-huh. Chase. Uh-huh. Keepers at home. So all of that, uh, how you used to dress, you your behind out, your breast out, all of that stuff is going to be, you're going to be fighting with it. Because now you got to cover up. Because before, your only uh, claim to fame is your body. Now you got to cover your body up and use your brain. 
You got everything you wanted with with the what the Lord gave you in the back and what the Lord gave you in the front. But now you got to put that thing away. Some of you sisters uh, and brother, hell, just not sisters, but brothers, too. You got to now uh, establish yourself and use the wisdom that the Lord gave you. That's a that's a not as straight of a path. Got to learn some things, a way to learn some things. It's going to be tough. So what? Who cares? No excuses. All right. Drop that. Drop that. Uh, uh, let's drop that because we only got 18 minutes. All right. Uh, let's go uh, to prayer. All right. Luke 21, 36. Luke 21, 36. The book of Luke, chapter 21 and verse 36. Uh-huh. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. So you have to pray always that you may be counted worthy by who? Christ. That you're going to avoid those things that's going to come to pass. Lord's will, you avoid the flames. Lord's will, you the, you snatched up by the uh, the angels to get out of the way of the destruction. But you got to always pray. You got to always get your, Lord, please don't take your spirit away from me. You got to pray for yourself getting right. You got to pray for vengeance. You got to pray for your brothers and sisters and the children. You got to pray for your nation, for the leadership. You got to always pray because it ain't this walk ain't about you. Yes, it includes you. But it's not about you. Read. And to stand before the son of man. Uh Uh-huh. And in the daytime, he was teaching in the temple. Where you at? Verse 37. All right. Nah, drop that. So, yeah. So you have to all watch and always pray that you may be accounted worthy. All right. Give me uh, Baruch chapter 4, verse 21. How should you pray? Right. Is it? Hail Mary, mother of God. Uh, or the soft behind prayers that uh, we learned in Christianity to pray. Let's read that. Baruch, uh, what I say? 421. The book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 21. Uh-huh. Be of good cheer. Be of oh. good cheer. So uh, you, you have to be in a, a, a cheerful state of mind. Yeah, it's going to be hard. Yeah, you're going to be bogged down with stuff. But you got to know that the kingdom of heaven is right around the corner if you endure. So be of good cheer. Get your spirit right. Read. Be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord, and he shall deliver you from the power and hand of the enemy. So, so for uh, listen, in order for your prayers to be heard, you got to be in the right spirit. It says, the first thing it says, be of good cheer. And then it says to cry to the Lord. That your prayers might be heard. Some of us praying with grievous words out of whatever uh, thought process that you have. Nah, you have to change your spirit. Get your spirit right before you come to the Lord with all that, uh, you know, woe is me prayer crap. No, it says cry to the Lord. How is your prayers? Do you cry to the Lord or are you just, you know, Lord, just, uh, just hear my prayers. Some weak behind prayer. The Lord don't want to hear that. He want to hear that you are is crying out to him. You really need for him to hear your prayers. Because it's not just for you, it's for everybody in this nation. All right, uh, drop that of uh, Psalms 55, 17. Psalms chapter 55, 17. This is, you know, how many times a day we should pray. And it's at least this many times. Great. The book of Psalms, chapter 55 and verse 17. Evening and morning and at noon will Uh I pray Uh and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. So God is saying it again. The Lord is saying it again through David. I believe it's David. It might be Asaph. But um, um, pray three times a day. And it says to cry out to the Lord. Get into your space to where you can and pray sincerely to the Lord. Three times, at least three times a day. Are you setting alarms on your phone to pray? To remind you? Because the busy, busy uh, part of the day going to get you. 
Set your uh, alarm at 7. Set it at 12. Set it at another 7. Or whatever the time is at evening when the sun about to go down. You need to set these alarms on your phone or you is you going to get so busy, the day going to come and go and you're going to, damn, I ain't even pray today. Wow. The Lord says pray three times a day. All right? Drop that. Um, 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 6. All right? What are you praying for? Vengeance, 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 vengeance. 2 Thessalonians, uh, what I say, 1 and verse 6. The book of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 1 and verse 6, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So it's a righteous thing to God to pray for vengeance so he can recompense tribulations to them that trouble you. It's righteous. The Christianity say, oh, just pray for everybody. No, the Lord says that it is righteous. To pray for that thing. Read. Verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Uh -huh. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Uh -huh. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Read on. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. Read. And from the glory of his power. Read. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. So you have to pray for vengeance. You have to pray. Your cries should go out to the Lord and pray for vengeance upon the strange nations. Vengeance upon the heathen that have destroyed us and destroyed our heritage. Vengeance on the, uh, the enemies that have created this Negro mindset to where when the words of the Lord comes out, they start twerking. Pray. Pray. Cry out to the Lord to bring us back to our former glory. All right. Uh, I'll drop that because we, you know, um, give me uh, James 5 and 16. We're skipping some things because we got that much time. James 5, 16, right? Why are you praying? Some things come up. You got to say, so what? I got, I, I got to pray. The book of James, chapter 5 and verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. So God says, confess your faults one to another. You got things that you're going through. Talk to your brother about it. Right? And pray one for another. Pray one for another. That ye may be healed. That you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So the effectual fervent prayer, crying out to the Lord. Fervency means to pray with some intensity. The effectual, meaning you love the brother, love the sister. You're thinking uh, about this brother and sister in your prayers. And it's fervent. Um of a righteous man availeth much. To avail means to prosper much. So when your prayers are fervent and effectual, then it will profit your brothers and your sister. But the Lord ain't, Raphael ain't taking no damn weak prayers to the Lord and get cussed out. Because that's his job. You read about it in Tobit. His job is to take the prayers of the righteous up and down back to the Lord. But are you here with these weak behind prayer? You're not taking that weak prayer to the Lord. You're not taking it to the Lord. You're going to get cussed smooth out. Why you brought this to me? They ain't even in the spirit. They ain't even got the right spirit when they pray. Why would you do that? Yeah, that holy angel ain't doing that. So I will behoove you to get some damn fire in your prayers, just like it's behoove us to get fire in our teachings. All right, uh, drop that. Give me Mark 13, verse 32. Why else were we praying? Right? So you're praying for vengeance. You're praying three times a day. You're praying for your brothers. That's the leadership on down, the sisters uh, of, of leadership on down, and the new sisters, the new brothers, all the, uh, all the above. So you're praying for. Then you're also praying for yourself. Read. The book of Mark, chapter 13, and verse 32. Yep. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man. Uh-huh. No, 
not the angels which are in heaven. So we don't know when Christ returns. So it behooves you to pray. It behooves you to study. It behooves you to uh, teach. It is in your uh, benefit that you are doing the things that he told you to do. Read. That hour no man knoweth. Uh -huh. No, not the angels which are in heaven, right. neither the son, but the father. Yep. Take ye heed. Watch and pray. So you don't know when Christ returning. So it said, take heed. Watch. Watch for the signs of the time. And you better be praying. Because we don't know. It can be right now. It can be in the next 20 seconds. It can be uh, 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 right when you uh, fell to your lust and you went on down Pornhub and you went to the uh, category that you so love. And as soon as you pray and get the first 10 seconds of that scene, the damn sky crack. And you're behind doing all manner of foolishness that uh, uh, that damn show ain't going to get you into the kingdom of heaven. Sisters, brothers, that's all of us up and down. We all battle with something. So the Lord says, you don't know when I'm coming back. Hell, he don't know. Only person that knows is the father. But if you got uh, uh, to uh, get your spirit right and, and get your mind right, it's through prayer. Read. Take ye heed, watch and pray. Uh -huh. For ye know not when the time is. When Christ was going to return, read. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey. Yeah, he went back to the kingdom with his father, read. Who left his house and gave authority to his servants uh -huh. and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh. So uh, the master of the house gave charge to the porters, which is a, the security, um, the servants of the house to keep the house done, keep the chores going, everything going, because he went on a, on a trip, a journey. It don't make sense for those people that was given charge. They got their feet up in the house. The damn yard ain't clean. Everything is all disarray as if you know the day when the master of the house is going to return. So it always behooves you to have everything on the up and up. So when the master returns, they ain't know, hey, yo, why, why, did, why ain't the grass cut? Why ain't this, that, and the other? So it's talking about spiritual as well. Your spirit ain't right in the day Christ returns. You don't know. You ain't going to have no time to get it right. You ain't going to, it ain't going to be no, uh, man, I got time. I'm just, hey, I'm going to go to Black Bike Week this weekend and I'm about to get it in. But shit, right after that, right after I get my last bike weekend, I'm going to, uh, shoot, I'm going to give my life to the Lord. Yeah, right. Nah, it ain't going to happen like that. Read. Verse 35. Yeah. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh. At even uh -huh. or at midnight. You don't know when he coming. Or at the cock crowing. Or in the morning. Or in the morning. Uh-huh. Lest coming suddenly, he finds you sleeping. Find you doing absolutely nothing. Your spirit is on low power mode. Read. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Watch. That's a direct order to watch. Because you have no clue when Christ is returning. So, you pray, you teach, you uh, study. All of these things is going to come up. But you got to say, so what? Why? Because you don't know when Christ is returning and some other brother out there is, is looking for you to be doing these things. All right. So uh, drop that. Uh, Matthew 6. Matthew 6 and verse 16. The book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Now we're going into uh, fasting. All right. So you have, we have, we've had uh, prayer. Teaching, studying, and now we have fasting. Verse 16. Now praying and fasting. Uh-huh. Read. Moreover, when ye fast, uh -huh. be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. So when you're fasting, don't be woe is me, right? Because fasting is has a purpose just like everything else we read today. Teaching has a purpose, prayer has a purpose, uh, studying has a purpose. Fasting has its purpose, spiritual, righteous purpose. Read. For they disfigure their faces uh -huh. that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. The, so don't be uh, fasting for, uh, for the glory of man. Oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just fasting. I'm just, I'm just, nah. 
The same energy you have every day is the same energy you have when you fasting. Read. Verse 17. But thou, when thou fastest. So this is a commandment of the Lord is in red. Anoint thine head uh -huh. and wash thy face. Anoint thy head and wash thy face. Right. Read. That thou appear not unto men to fast, uh -huh. but unto thy father, which is in secret. Yep. And thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. So don't go fasting and, and so everybody knows. Christ said don't let nobody know that you're fasting. Clean your face. Don't be dirty face or, or whatever the case may be. You, you need to uh, uh, fast and, and, and present yourself like you uh, are thankful that you have the opportunity to fast because it's for a purpose because the Lord is going to reward you openly if you do those things fast where, hey, this is between me and the Lord, not for everybody to know what's going on. All right. Matthew 17, 21. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 21. Uh -huh. How be it, this kind goeth not out. But by prayer and fasting. Some of us have heavy, heavy, heavy spirits on us. Some of us brothers have, sisters have heavy spirits on us. So we got to fast. We got to fast. There's some of those spirits, adultery. Read that for me. Uh, adultery, fornication, uncleanness equals vile affection, offensive sexual desires, lasciviousness, idolatry. Witchcraft, hatred, variance, conflicts, emulations, imitate, strife, seditions, wrath, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, partying. Right. So all of these heavy, heavy spirits and vile affections, that homosexual spirit, that lesbianism, uh, lesbianism, I can't even say it, lesbianism spirit. You can take it down. Lesbianism spirit, heavy, heavy, heavy spirits. We got to pray. Some of those spirits don't come just by reading and, and congregating, studying, praying. No, nah, it comes by fasting. So you're fasting for yourself, getting these spirits off you, but you're also fasting for your brother's spirit. All of these things that the Lord say to do ain't just for you. This is a community. We do all of these things for each other. Zephaniah 2 and 1 said, gather together, O nation, not desire. This is a nation thing. Right? Drop that. Psalms 35 and 11. Psalms chapter 35 and verse 11. The book of Psalms chapter 35 and verse 11. I hope you brothers, sisters getting something from this class, man, because... um. You know, we got to get it right to get to the kingdom of heaven. All right. Read that. Verse 11. False witnesses, this false witnesses did rise up. Uh -huh. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. So uh, David is saying false witnesses rose up against him and they lied on him. As brothers in this truth, uh, uh, sisters in this truth, they're going to lie on you. How are you going to respond? You're going to respond like David or you're going to respond like uh Bonquisha, a Ray Ray, Pookie. So David is saying that some people lied, false witnesses rose up and they laid to his charge things that he knew not. He ain't know nothing about what they was talking about. He never did it. Read. They rewarded me evil for good. I was they were, he was good to the uh, brothers, sisters, but they rewarded him evil. They they uh, created scenarios to make him fall. Or try to make him fall, just like you have in this truth. You have brothers and sisters that ain't they don't love you uh, affectionately. They don't love you uh, like brothers. They do do things underhandedly by behind your back. That's that's going on right now. Read to the spoiling of my soul. Uh huh. But as for me, but as for me, when they were sick, this is heavy. My Wait. clothing hold was. On. Hold on, hold on a second. It says they. Uh, false witnesses rose up. They lied on him. They did things that um, uh, they rewarded his good for evil. Listen to uh, David and what he did for them. All of these evil things that he did, that they did against him, 
Look what he did. Read. Verse 13. Uh-huh. But as for me, when they were sick. The same brother and sister that lied on me. The same brothers and sisters that uh, uh, rewarded me evil for good. The same brothers and sisters that laid false charges on me that was evil as hell. When they got sick, what did he do? My clothing was sackcloth. He mourned with them. That is so heavy. Because he understood, this is my brother nonetheless. Yes, he did all those things. He was sick in the mind. But I understand that I love him so much to where, hey, he's sick now. Do I say, man, shit, let that nigga die then? Nah. David says he put on, he was a king. He put on sackcloth to mourn. Same way you read about in Job. His friends came from far off to sit with him for seven days to mourn while he was sick. Read. I humbled my soul I, with fasting. I humbled my soul with fasting. He fasted for the brothers that did him evil. Fasted for the sisters that did him evil. We got to get to this level to where brothers and sisters, it's going to happen. Lord says it's going to happen. But you heap them coals on the head by still mourning with them and fasting with them. That is so heavy. Read. And my prayer returned onto my own bosom. So he uh he he um he he prayed for him. Oh, 14. Read 14. Verse 14. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend. He did what? I behaved myself as though he had been my friend mm. or brother. Uh-huh. I bowed down heavily as one that mourned for his mother. So David had a different spirit on him. That's a heavy spirit. You understand that these brothers or sisters may be out the spirit, but he said he behaved himself as though this was his best friend. We got to get to that level. We got a lot of work to do because I know brothers and sisters here in this class right now probably like, man, I got a long way before I get there. Well, David, did it. He was a king. He didn't have to do that for nobody. He was above everybody. But yet, the brother or sister that did him wrong, and this is also prophetic uh, for us in this future, so that's how we should behave ourselves as those, this is our friends. Pray for the brothers. Saying, you watch Bishop, Bishop Nathaniel, several years back. We know that our brothers, um, you know, or from the other camps, hate us or have, you know, evil, uh, evil eye to us, whatever. What, you know, we ain't getting into all of that, whatever. But what did he do for them at Passover? He prayed for their success. He named them by name. Lord, please show them some mercy. Lord, please bless them. Lord, please heal their families. Lord, please take care of their wives and their children. Lord, please increase, increase them financially. The same spirit that David have, we saw with Bishop, we saw with the bishops, the deacons, towards those other camps that we know that has immediate, uh, immediately said they hate our guts. But that's not how brother, brothers should respond like this. You hate me? Okay, I love you. I'm going to pray for you, brother. And I'm going to pray diligently for you. Right? Uh, drop that. Give me uh, 2 Samuel 11. We're almost done. 11 and verse, oh, excuse me, 2 Samuel 1 and verse 11. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 1 and verse 11. Uh -huh. Then David took hold onto his clothes and rent them, and likewise all the men that were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted unto even uh -huh. for Saul and for Jonathan his son uh -huh. and for the people of the Lord. And for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. Uh, by the sword. So uh, David say he mourned, wept, fasted for Saul. Saul hated David. He was jealous. Saul hated David. He mourned for Jonathan. John, Jonathan loved David. And then say he also fasted for the people of the Lord and the house of Israel 
because they uh because they were fallen by the sword. Read. And David said unto the young man. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. So uh that was it. So we have to get into the mindset, even though brothers and sisters hate us in this truth, we gotta show forth a good example, right? So what how they they hate us? So what? Who cares? Who cares? Pray for. Uh give me that and uh uh, Matthew 5, verse 44. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, and verse 44. Uh-huh. But I say unto you, love your enemies. The enemies of your people, not the enemies of the world, your people. It's like how you saw with David. Saul was an enemy of David. It says, love them. What? Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Uh-huh. Do good to them that hate you. Uh-huh. And pray for them which despitefully use you. These are this is the uh the enemies of your people, not the enemies of the other nations. Despite of how they uh uh act towards you, okay, I'm gonna pray for you. Don't get out of the spirit because we lead us, man. We we gotta uh take reins of this nation and get things squared away. All right, we gotta always stay in t- in the spirit. Read. Uh, and pray read, for re, yeah, read, yeah, read that. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Uh huh. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Uh huh. For He maketh His Son to rise on the evil and on the good. Uh huh. And sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. Read. For if ye love them which love you, what rewards have ye? So God, uh, uh, Christ said. If you just love the people that love you, what's the reward you're going to get from that? Because it's easy. You can, it's easy to love brothers that love you. Easy to love sisters that love you. Lord says to love the brothers that hate you. That's the difficult part because you got to get out of your own way to get out of your own um, thought process to actually show forth true love and heap coals upon the brother's head. Maybe you gain them back. Whatever y'all did or whatever happened to to, for y'all to fall out, maybe you gain them back. Maybe the Lord uh, 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 correct his, his or her spirit by you still showing. Don't be, uh, uh, don't be ignorant. Don't be foolish out here blindly just, oh, you know, getting beat across the head. No, 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 no. That's not what it's talking about. Pray for them. Love them. Still show. Hey, sis, you need something? Because the scripture, there's a law that says if your enemy's ox fall in the hole, you need to help them. You must help him. This is your sworn enemy of your, of your peoples. Y'all had some sort of falling out, but you walk in, going somewhere, and you see him trying to do, uh, get his ox out of a hole, but you're just going to walk past him and keep it going? No, you're going you're gonna to round up the brothers to go help him and, and get his ox out of a hole. That's the law. All right, read on. Verse 46, uh-huh. for if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? Uh-huh. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? So it, <laughs> unless you want to be classified as a damn publican, an unbeliever, Lord says, those enemies that you have, love them. Those enemies that you have, salute them. Shalom. These other camps that hate us, hey, shalom, bro. Most high Christ bless you. Keep it moving. Shalom them. Give them a dap. Shalom, hey, man. Um, whatever you're going to say, keep it moving, whatever. Who are we to see another brother from another camp doing, another, doing the work of the Lord because one brother or two or however many brothers, you'd be like, man, I ain't saying nothing. No, nah, the Lord says you, even that they your enemies, hey, shalom. All right, uh, uh, 40, 48. Verse 48, be therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So we read that uh, scripture right there, but we don't read the scriptures above it. The Lord says, uh, uh, love them that hate you, salute them that hate you, and then it says to be perfect. That is, that is the pathway of perfection, that you love your brothers, all right? Uh, bring up that meme. That uh the the results. 
I posted this also on Facebook a couple weeks back. All right? Read that. The results that you are looking for is in the work you are avoiding. So the results that you are looking for in this truth, in your life, in your family, amongst the nation, you want to be a better teacher. You want to teach these kids, right? You want to be a better wife. You want to be a better husband. The results of all of those things that you're trying to get is in the work that you are avoiding. Because brothers want to get in shape. Man, I wish I had me a, a six-pack. The reason why you ain't got one is because the work that it takes to get there, you've been putting it off. You've been avoiding it. Those results that you're looking for is only in the work that you're avoiding. Because the other stuff that you got is because you put the work in getting it. That's it. Simple, but profound. All right? All right, um, last two scriptures, all right? Uh, Luke 9 and verse 58. Let's show you that, you know, these cl- this class is it's called So What? All right? So, I mean, don't care how you feel about it. Christ don't either, right? Christ don't care. He understands that this thing is going to be hard and difficult because, hell, he went through it, all right? Uh, Luke 9, 58. The book of Luke, chapter 9 and verse 58. Yep. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes. And birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man have not where to lay his head. Uh huh. Verse fifty nine. Yep. And he said unto and he said unto another, "Follow me." But he said, "Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father." So uh, this man, Christ said, "Follow me. Let's go do the work." Then immediately an excuse came up. The Lord uh, classifies this as an excuse. He said, "Let me go bury my father." Right. That to us that might be something that is. Super heavy. My father in the world just died. But the work must get done. You must, you must, uh, have, you set to go and do a blitz. You set to go teach this seminar. You set to go do these things for the Lord. But something like this happened to where your earthly father passed away. Let's see what Christ say about that. Great. Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead. Uh. Go down and preach the kingdom of God. So Christ himself said, yeah, that happened, but go and keep preaching. Let the dead bury their dead. Let the people in your family that don't believe in this truth, that's still dead in spirit, let them have that funeral. It is what it is. You got work to do. That's that's difficult for a lot of brothers, a lot of sisters, because you put your family Above the work, uh, above the Lord. That's why he says, if you love your father and mother more than me, you're not worthy of me. Christ himself says, let, let, the, let your worldly family bury them. You got stuff to do. Read. And another also said, Lord, I will, fo- I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my house. So your family is now, your, your living family that is in um, the truth. It says that I'm going to do this work. But first of all, let me go, you know, do a little something with my wife. Let me go salute and shalom my kids. Let me go uh, get comfortable real quick. But then I, I'm coming. But the Lord knows if you go home, you might not come out. You might have an excuse at that point. Read. And Jesus said unto him, no man having putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So there's work to do. He said, no man that... Is supposed to be doing his work, but always thinking about his wife and his kids and stuff that's going on. Ain't nothing wrong with uh, having a family, but your family cannot ever be more important than the Lord. Ever, they don't come before the Lord. Christ says, "You put your, you said you in this fight. Don't let your family be the reason why you don't go. You put your hand to the plow." But you're looking back like, man, I wish I was. Nah. He said, you're not even fit for the kingdom of heaven. Meaning that you'll never make it to the kingdom of heaven if you got a spirit like that. All right? Drop that. Uh, last scripture, Luke 14, 18. The book of Luke, chapter 14, and verse 18. Uh-huh. And they all, with one consent, began to make excuse. Uh-huh. So, the- this, so... Christ is, uh, is in red. So 
Go back and read this for yourself, man. Get this into your spirit, right? Class called So What? These now going to go over those excuses that we come up with that Christ give to. He don't give a doggone about it. Read on. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground uh-huh. and, I mu- and I must needs go to see it. Uh-huh. I bought I- some land. I got to go till it. I got to go put some uh, plants in the, uh, some vegetables in the ground. I got to go do whatever. And all after that, then I'm going to come um, and do the work of the Lord. Read. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I have bought five y- yoke of oxen uh-huh. and I-, I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. So you bought a piece of land. Hey, I, I can't do the work today. I can't do the work this week. I can't do the work this month. I can't do the work this year. This decade, I can't do the work. Please excuse me, Lord. Please forgive me for not doing the work of the Lord. No, that ain't going to be excused. I got some oxen. I got some, uh, some, some stuff I just bought. I got to make sure it work right. Um, yeah, man, yeah. I got... Uh, I got this thing that I got to do. Please excuse me. Read. And another said, I have married a wife mm. and therefore I cannot come. I have. Got, <laughs> that's heavy. I got just got married. I just came off my cruise and we ain't seen the brothers yet. We ain't seen the sisters yet. You got an excuse. This it's very, it's, it's, uh, it takes a, a, a strong spirited brother to go get married, go to the wedding chamber, do what you do as married couple, but then come back with that flame, that fire. A lot of brothers come back lackluster, weeds all, knees all weak, don't want to do the work of the Lord. I got a new wife, but I can't come because she ain't letting me come. I got to make sure my fam. No, get out of that house. Do the work of the Lord. Read. Go to, uh, uh, yeah, keep reading to 23. Verse 21. So that the servant came and showed the Lord these things. Uh-huh. Then the master of the house being angry. Being sounds, what? And the master of the house being angry said to his servant. So the Lord is angry at you excuse making brothers and sisters. Read. Go out quickly. Into the streets and the lanes of the city. Bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Even with your excuses, the Lord says, I hear what you're saying. Go out and do the work. Go out and bring the uh, poor. Go out and bring the maimed. Go out and bring the halt and the blind. Stop with all these doggone excuses. I don't care what you got going on. Do the work. So what? I don't care. That's what the Lord is saying right here. He's, he said became angry hearing your doggone excuses. Read. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou commanded me. So now that the, that the master get mad with you, now all of a sudden it makes sense to do the work. Why did it take for somebody to get the Lord to get mad with you? Stuff start going wrong in your life. Your finances start jacking up and your health start getting bad before you start to say, damn, I'm, I'm tripping, man. The Lord is judging me, man. Let me go out and do this work. Why it would take for all of that for the work to be done? As opposed to saying, yo, hey, wife, I am out. Shalom, my Lord. You be safe. I'm going to pray for you. This, that, and the other. Pray that you come back safe. Uh, uh, bring the word, out, the word of the Lord out strong. Pray that uh, at least one soul repents. Something to that effect, encouraging that brother to go out and continue in the work as opposed to seeing him just land. No, nah, I ain't going. I ain't going today. You know, and he'd be like, oh, OK, no. Nah. You as a wife need to encourage your husband to go out because this, we don't get the kingdom by just observation. Read. And yet there is room. Uh huh. There and- is room. There is room. So, because when you read up, it's talking about the wedding. It's talking about the the end of times when Christ returned. That wedding of him joining back with the nation of Israel, right? It says there's room. There's more room. There's more work to be done. You did all this work, and now now the uh, now after you done, damn, it's still 
We still ain't got 12,000 of each tribe. We still got stuff to work on. Zebulon ain't waking up like that. Gad is still on, on the reservation. Um, Reuben ain't, he, they got the damn casinos. They ain't listening right now. There's still more work to be done. Read. Verse 23. Yep. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out unto the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So there's always work. So first of all, the Lord ain't hearing your excuses. Second of all, he don't care. He's angry. Then he says, so what? Go do the work. Because it's, it's going to be through much tribulation. All right. So, um, you know, I pray that y'all brothers and sisters got something from this class. And then your class is called, uh, so what? No excuses. So, um, you know, get these scriptures into your spirit, man. Go back over this class if you need to. Um, always go back over the scriptures, man, because uh, we ain't going to get the kingdom by just sitting twirling our thumbs. It's going to be difficult. And you have to always challenge yourself um, to, to go out. Uh, I heard a video one time. It says, when it get painful, you should say good. At least I, I got more work to do. You didn't get that job that you uh, uh, was trying to get? Good. That mean I got to get better. We ain't in the kingdoms yet. Okay, good. That mean that more, more and more brothers and sisters need to wake up. You need to have uh, that, that spirit that you want to see everybody of the kingdom of heaven. I mean, everybody the kingdom of, of Israel, the nation of Israel, get the kingdom of heaven. We know it's not going to happen, but it should be in your spirit that they get right. All right? So with that, you know, I'm going to say shalom, most high in Christ bless you. I pray that you got some from this class. So what? No excuses. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Is you. And finally, my brother, be strong.